Welcome to the For the Youth Podcast. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm good. You guys are good? <laughs> I'm real good. This is only my second time ever being on the podcast. Well, right? You're only you're only good at talking about certain things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm not. Lane and I are really like, we're utility players. <laughs> we're, you know. You didn't have to roast me like that. We're, uh, you know, like jack of all trades. Mm. So, um, master of none. Meaning like, you're, you're good at talking about worship. We brought you on for the worship episode. All right, so I just won't talk until you got to stay in your lane, bro. That's, I won't, what, I'm, I won't that's talk what I'm trying to tell you. I won't talk until the worship time, then. Yeah, just sit there and time out. Uh, how are you doing, Lane? I'm doing good. It's good? busy, but like I'm doing good. So, guys, uh, Lane forgot what day it was. I did. She didn't know <laughs> that we were recording a podcast today. She knew, but she forgot. Yeah. Um, but we can't roast Lane too much because we were just actually really impressed that Lane changes her own oil. Oh. <laughs> So we yeah. we just Very before impressive. we hit record we were like actually Lane that's like really impressive like like good for you I don't know too many people I feel very independent uh, yeah. uh, you, don't good, no, so you don't need no you don't need no man you don't need no mechanic yeah that's no, right I'm my own mechanic I don't know how to change my oil I mean I I know how to in theory but yeah. I don't want to I'm paranoid about that kind of stuff like I want to do the work on my car because I know I'm gonna do it right like you mean you don't trust mechanics a little bit. No. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's I that's just, a hot take. I just can't get myself to pay that much. Well, it's also yeah, it, it is also a lot of money. Yeah. money. yeah, that's right. That Sometimes makes a lot of sense. Sometimes I can't get the bolt yeah. off, and I have to like kick it a little bit. But other than that, like I feel like I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like an absolute wimp right now. Like I feel like you step up your game, bro. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Um, we're talking about all kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. and and truthfully, Clint, we're glad that you're here to discuss all of those items, not just worship. Oh, I Although. I can't talk until the worship time. No, you're out of timeout. You're out of timeout. Oh, yeah. um, so. We are going to talk about a little bit about music and worship and things like that. Um, we are probably going to roast each other just a little bit more, but there's lots of lots to discuss. We mm-hmm. are we on track to do one every month again? Yeah. Are we on track? We did one last month. What? Is this is May. Are we in May, May still? We're still in May. Yeah, we're, we're still May, in May. Yeah. Next week is June. So we're the last few days of yeah. May. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the we're last good. few days. Dang it. We better publish this quick. <laughs> yep. Uh, that may or may not get done. It might be May, it might be June. We might still be on track for doing one every month, once a month. We might have just barely fallen behind. But we recorded it in May. That's what matters. That is what matters. So, um, I am also playing producer here. Are you ready for this? You guys, look forward. Boom. Whoopsh. Camera change. Whoopsh. It didn't work oh, that time. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And um, that's how it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, what so pro. what are we, we're talking about? Movement youth music. Mm-hmm. We're talking about uh, stuff that makes us really mad. Let's talk about that first. This is our favorite recurring segment, yeah. and by recurring segment, I mean we did it one other time. We're gonna have a little segment right here, Clint. Welcome to uh, the segment for the first time called "What's Got Your Flabbergasted." Flabbergasted. I don't know where that accent came what's from. What's got your flabbergasted? What's, what's got your flabbergasted? No. <laughs> My, it was inspired by my grandpa. My grandpa says that word, flabbergasted. Your grandpa. Everyone, Jernigan. Tell, tell everyone what your grandpa's name is. Flanoy. Flanoy. Albert Flanoy. Albert. Jernigan. He goes by Flanoy. Albert Flanoy Flabbergasted Jernigan. Yeah. Um, Flanoy the Flabbergasted. He always that word. It means like what, what's got it's you good. ticked off? It's what's good. made you mad? What are you, what are you yeah. upset about? I guess I'm, right now I'm flabbergasted about. Uh, uh, speaking of. Mike, I'm sorry. <laughs> say it again. On say camera. Again. Wrong right again. now, wrong again. Go. There we go. Right now, I'm kind of flabbergasted. Speaking of vehicles, about my car because mm-hmm. the AC just went out in my car. Um, I have 350 something thousand miles. Uh, you want to share? I was going to say you could. You could have. Share with the you class. could have Lane change the oil for you. <laughs> I could. I could. Lane could change my yeah, oil if you're not man go. enough like um, like me. Uh, sorry, you were saying. So, I'm I'm at an impasse because do I spend a thousand dollars? Or whatever the obscene cost it will be to fix the AC. Uh, I also need new tires. Do I put new tires on my car? That's another like and any day now. Every time six hundred dollars minimum. If right. You get the yeah. Cheapos. So I'm looking at upwards of two thousand dollars to get my car in like good operating. I need to redo the tent on it too. It's literally like falling off the windows. Like, do you this, need to though, this, or is well, that a, is that a want to? I mean, it's a want to, but I mean, you're in Florida. It's you for your. Have to have, you kind of have to have tent. It's it, especially maybe, when you're AC. Maybe it's one work. of those things like you don't know how much you need it till it's gone. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. <laughs> I don't. I don't think of it as that important. I yeah. Have, like, no tent. So I every know time you, need it. you know you need it, yeah. but yeah. you haven't wrecked. Have you wrecked? Have I wrecked? Have you gotten a wreck before? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. You, <laughs> so need, you need a tent. tent. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, every time I roll down my back window, it's like, <laughs> like you're unraveling. Ten- anyway, I've seen it. To get my car into like good operating condition, I'd have to put a good couple thousand dollars into it. And every day I get in my car and it starts up, I'm like, all right, <laughs> dang, another it. day, one more day. Yeah. But at the same time, like we need to give this car credit because how many oh, yeah. miles does it have it's on? It's got over three hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. Three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. miles on it. It's it's, it's a good in places. Yeah, it's a good car. It's gone. Wait, it's, it's gone. gone. Places. Uh, how many miles do you think your car has on it, Lane? I somehow got my. It's an 08, and I bought it with only fifty thousand miles on it. Oh, so, so you got. I'm at like eighty or not. I'm probably at ninety. That's good. Right now. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Burning rubber though. Yeah. That's, you're putting yeah. some miles on. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, Jonathan Simons was uh, who? It's Jonathan's last week on our team. Yeah. Big sad. Before he goes to uh, Georgia, it's a bummer. Working with a great church up Georgia. there called Twelve Stone Church, um, and uh, it's it's a great move for him. It's a great opportunity. But uh, Jonathan did the math for us one time. And uh, he was trying to figure out how many miles the youth staff have on their cars between your car, my car, Kendall's. And I think he counted his at the time, too. And it was yeah. something like 700,000 miles, yeah, which is miles. too many miles yeah, for that kind of car. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. Mm-hmm. But what's got you flabbergasted, um, Lane? I'm trying to think. I always, I always do this wrong, and I do the flabbergasted something I'm like sur- – like, pleasantly surprised by but right. i have one something i'm mad about too so pleasantly <laughs> she's like <laughs> this is lane she's like i'm really mad about this <laughs> like I'm really <laughs> i'm actually really mad we um, can tell okay i'll start with i'll start with the mad not as mad but more so it was just it was flabber it was i was flabbergasted <laughs> yeah um I don't know if you guys know about like all the banned books and stuff in schools in Florida mm. yeah. and all that. So um, I was very much anti book banning. Like I was like, you should be able to read whatever you want. And then I was watching like I don't know if it was a court case. It was just some like public hearing, mm-hmm. and these kids were reading books that they had been assigned. And I was like, I don't even want to read that. And mm. the, oh not, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Like in theory, you're like, yeah, we don't want to ban any books, but, but when they some of them were like, and I was like, I was like, ah. Yeah. Uh, no. Makes you yeah. uncomfortable. So, yeah, there's, like, that whole... And that's a very common conversation right now, like, protecting children. Like, what age right, is too young? Right, right, blank right. And blank. Mm-hmm. So that, I was flabbergasted by that. I was like, ugh. Like, Were these, like, like inappropriate, like... Edu- would you say these are, like, educational books that were assigned to children? Well, like... Uh, to be like, hey, this is how... I don't want to get into icky details, but, like, this is how, like, the body, human body works and, you know, like that kind of stuff. Not even, like, educational books. It'll be, like, enter... Like, I don't want to say entertainment, but like, if you'll get assigned like summer reading, like something that's supposed to like expand just like right. your literary knowledge. Yeah, I can understand me as a high schooler maybe getting assigned these books, but when there's like middle middle schoolers reading them, like, mm-hmm. I yeah. wouldn't even like mm-hmm. if you wouldn't let your kid watch a movie right. with that in it. Right, you let your kid you're like read? that's right. ju- that's just like right. Dang it, like, you were well, talking, <laughs> and I had it on my face. I'm so sorry. You were making a great point there. Oh no, but yeah, I was just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all the books I've read, but I wouldn't want to read some of them in like middle school and if they're counting them for a grade too right like, well uh, that and like like it's a lot of that stuff is is basically like erotic literature mm-hmm. like that is yeah. that is yeah. just that's that's what it's it is like it's There's educational so many other kinds of literature you can learn about right at they're that like age. it's yeah. it's it's educational it's mm-hmm. it's character but no it's gross yeah, yeah. all right pick something no. else nasty yeah. anyways yeah um i was i was thinking about this for a minute what what am i what's got me ticked off Ah, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, no, no, no. I share an office with you, Clint. I like, uh oh, my office is right next to you. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm saying you've probably heard me complaining about stuff this week. Oh, okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ask I you, what am I mad about? about me. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Although, real talk, I was trying to have a meeting earlier and you're blasting music really loud. I do just sing all the time, too. Yeah, but you, you sing like, good. But I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to roast you <laughs> with a lie. It's not funny if it's a lie. Yeah. It's only funny if it's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What am I mad about? Have I been complaining about anything uh, a lot lately? Complain about so many things. It's hard to pick one. Hard to pick one. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't been sleeping all that good. Something you complained about recently? I have. I've been waking up at like three forty-five for the past three mornings, and three forty not being and able to purpose? go back to sleep. Oh, no, yeah. not, on like, not on purpose. Not on purpose. Not because I want to, but yeah, that's it's exactly. flabbergasting. It's confounding. Yeah, I'm like. Why is my body awake right now? My body knows I'm supposed to be yeah. asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, like my eyeballs are mm-hmm. burning. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Let me know if, in the comments if this ever happens to you and if you, you know wake up. 
what causes it, let me know. Uh, melatonin ain't doing it. <laughs> uh, the the melatonin gummies are failing me miserably. Mm. Um, Maybe you've yeah. become reliant on the melatonin gummies. No, I only started trying them. I only started oh, using after them this happened. when I was not able to sleep. Mm. So, bummer. Thank you, Dr. Clint. I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> you let me down. But uh, let us know in the comments what's got you flabbergasted, yeah. what's got you ticked off. Maybe it is the way that I am really poorly, you know, switching cameras. Going back and forth from one we camera need, to another. We need like a producer. No, 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 no. I got yeah. this. We had Joey's well. our producer once. Okay. <laughs> Joey, if you're watching this, I love you. And you're the best. <laughs> and that's all. That's all. That's all. No, Joey. Oh, okay. okay. Joey's going to come back on the episode again. Um, there wasn't a but. There wasn't a but. Okay. There it's could be a... It sounded like there was going to be a but. Maybe there's a however. However. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Joey did a better job with his... Have his brain die behind his back well, than, than me trying to do this and multitask. So uh, we probably do need Joey back. But let us know what's got you ticked off. Um, I, I want to talk, Clint, for just a second. Okay. Are you the next Chris Tomlin? Uh real talk uh this lady at a certain there was an event at a certain church in town like back when i was in high yeah, school yeah um i won't i won't name i won't name any churches um but this lady came up to me after this event it was like a charity event that i did for somebody at my school you were like playing music i was playing music and i played a song that i wrote and this lady comes up to me and she says i've received a vision from the lord you have been anointed to be the next Chris Tomlin for this generation, or something wow. like that. This, yeah, this lady. Big was shoes. Like, and uh, she, actually, and she Chris said, Tomlin she has said very like, little shoes. The He's prophecy has already not come true uh, because she said, like, within the next, I don't know, three years or something. It was something like that. Maybe it was like, but you know, when people try to like mess with Genesis a little bit, they're like, but a year is but like a, a year thousand, is a day, yeah. A day is like a thousand years to the yeah. Lord. So, so hey, in 3,000 years, you will be the next Chris yeah, Tomlin. Maybe. Perhaps I don't know how that'll work. He'll dust off. The how many? How, do you? Th how many of our audience do you think knows who Chris Tomlin is? Lane, do you know who Chris Tomlin yes. is? Okay, okay. Yes. I would say mo. Who is Chris uh, Tomlin? Singer. Okay, he is a singer. He is a singer. Okay, what, I was like, what kind of singer? I was like, I'm not about to let you country, like bluff right? your way through this. He no, is not no, a. He is no, not a you know country him singer. Of, you know him because of Rhett Walker. No, I was thinking of Chris Did, Stapleton. Chris oh. Stapleton. I knew it. I knew it. Lane's like, Lane's like, yeah, I know who Chris Tomlin is. Then? Is he a Christian singer? He's a Christian okay, singer. Yes. He's written like okay. half of the worst yes. songs that you okay, sing yes. in church yeah. ever. Okay, a lot yeah. Or he stole them from somebody else and then made them more popular yeah, and, <laughs> and cashed in big time. I'm That's not, what he does. Hey, I'm not. I'm not hating the player. Right. I'm, not, I'm just I hate the game. Um, That's right. Hey. So well, wait. He. I was probably probably most popular between like '95 and 2010. Yeah, he's like in early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s, and he's still showing up at like Passion he's, Conference. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He's, he's like 55 popular. years old and rocking skinny got jeans. Millions of listeners yeah. on Spotify. Oh yeah, and stuff. Yeah. More money than any of us here would sure. know what to do with. Yep. And uh, has led a bunch of people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Great guy. So Clint's supposed to be that guy. Uh, yeah, apparently for this generation, because not 2010s. You know, we're in the 2020s. Prophesied. now. It's been yeah. prophesied. We'll see if it, the and lady. No that pressure. random lady was a false prophet or not. False prophet. <laughs> or she just had some, some bad seafood, maybe. Could have been. Yeah, Could possibly. Have been. Uh, but real talk, the reason I ask, not because um, of that prophecy, but real talk, uh, you are actually wearing a Movement Youth Music sure shirt am. right Represent. now. Represent. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to talk for just a moment about Movement Youth Music, because you guys have been writing and producing a lot of new music. It's not exactly Chris Tomlin vibes. Nope. Um, a little different. It's it's some people could say it's it's like like chain smokers got a hold of Chris Tomlin's music yeah, and then you could um, you could say that they <laughs> that's really good actually. would they be that's, right if yeah. they said that though it. would they be right or you're like you could say that no 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 that's it'd be accurate. a lie that's very accurate okay I mean yeah yeah Joseph would not appreciate that no he would oh he would he okay lo like he would very much appreciate the fact that you said that yeah because he loves the most recent chain smokers album does he I haven't like, listened well, the, I know like two thousand. 17 Chainsmokers. I haven't listened to anything recently. Yeah. The most recent album, the production on it is apparently um, like world class. So you're told. I mean, so I'm told. Yeah, I yeah. really haven't listened to yeah. it. <laughs> Joseph, <laughs> Joseph has been begging me. To. Joseph Dorsey. And We're really sorry for not have, listening I'm to sorry, it. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, he sends me music all the time and says, hey, you should listen to this. And I don't do What's it. like your go to <laughs> music lane? Like, what's on your playlist? Oh. Oh, that's Frequently. a difficult question. It's either like worship music. Recently, it's been, I was actually talking to Kendall outside that I've been going on like, I call them like therapy runs. And it's either worship music. Or running is therapy. Or that's like, it's like worship music or it's like 
teenage girl breakup music, like Taylor mm-hmm. Swift. And like, like nothing in between? Nothing in between. Yeah. No. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, that's been yeah. my go-to. There's, that's a wide spectrum of emotions. It, it is. Lot. Actually, in a roundabout way, if if you're you're listening to worship music mm-hmm. and teenage girl breakup music, I actually see the I commonality s- there. In I that, feel like I have the same like, expressions to yeah. it like, as I'm running. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, per Nathan Finocchio, I feel like... As he said multiple times, we we a lot of times we 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 talk about God like he's our desperate boyfriend. Right. Have yeah. you ever listened? Yes. Like yeah. I saw this YouTube reaction video the other day. Well, and we talk about our our girlfriends and boyfriends as though they're God. Ooh, too. that'll preach. That's another one. <laughs> that'll <laughs> preach. It goes both ways. <laughs> that'll preach. But there's uh, this YouTube reaction video that I saw. It was like this this guy. I don't think he was even a Christian, and he was like listening to like a segment of a song, mm-hmm. and then then they would ask him. Is that a worship song? Is that a church song? Or is that a like a like a breakup? Is he talking about is a relationship? Is he talking about a, yeah, yeah, a girlfriend a girl. or is he talking about yeah. God? Yeah. And he was wrong half of the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, hard to tell. Sometimes it's hard to tell. But mm-hmm. uh so so you're saying we need some like Taylor Swift vibes on the next yeah. single that comes out? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, totally. Cool. No, actually cool. one of the things that we've been trying to do with the most recent song that we're working on um is w- Almost all of our songs have had I, me, yeah, per, like mm-hmm. verbiage, uh, not verbiage. Per, uh, yeah, vocabulary. Vocabulary. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, right. Well, that's verbs, a noun. Verbs, not a verb. Particular. Yeah, <laughs> nouns. Um, I, me, pronouns. Yeah, there you go. Um, like, so we've been trying to do only uh, talk about God, and this most recent one has we, like uh, us collectively, um, which is. I don't know. It's a more. It's a like more, a corporate, like yeah, corporate solidarity. Um, like we focusing, are singing this to you, God, yeah, not yeah. just yeah, I me and giving yeah, yeah and giving glory to God. Like yeah. S- like yeah, ascribing mm-hmm. glory to Him, and that's been so. That was the challenge. I said I was like, all right, I'm not gonna write a song that has I me in it mm-hmm. anywhere. It's all gonna be us giving glory to God, like as a collective, and talk more about God than about me yeah you know mm-hmm. so that's tricky i think there there's which, which leads away from that like desperate girlfriend desperate yeah. boyfriend kind of right vibe yeah well, i think i think we could camp out here for just a second like honestly uh we've we've had like eight or nine episodes of this so far is this eight nine i don't know, I don't know. we've had a few like and we have not actually talked about the fact oh. that uh we have a band we have a worship team that's writing great worship music that's not uh you know toxic relationship Mm -hmm. you know dressed up as christianity and um we're we're proud of it you guys have produced Mm -hmm. some great music that is some of the songs have got got like 20 25 000 streams Mm -hmm. so somebody else i don't know we don't know who those people People are are somebody likes them um and uh we wanted to camp out there for a second because i think a lot of worship music is uh it's Mm self-worship in a in a backhanded like pseudo religious way it's like God, you saved me. You mm-hmm. like all these things are biblical. They're true, uh, but they're like overdone. Mm-hmm. Like God, yeah. you, you loved me so much. You really, really loved me. God, you really loved me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. wow, you loved me so much. Like, hey, we we get it. Mm-hmm. We yeah. get, we get it. Mm-hmm. Let's it's let's talk to, about God it's too. It's hard to worship to those songs too, because it's like mm. you know you are reflecting not only like yeah. your own like your own journey with God, whatever. Mm. So it's hard to worship to like yeah. you were saying like the I, me songs. Yeah. And I didn't even realize the importance of that until I think it was like in Denver that I heard you and Spencer talking about a worship song and you were trying to figure out if they were talking to the audience or to God, like mm. who they were talking yeah. to. And I was like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And now that I worship, like I do realize there's a you difference. Actually, yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between like even the way I position myself. Like mm-hmm. if I have my mm-hmm. hands up or if I'm like praying, like talking to God, like it's one mm-hmm. or the other. Yeah. But yeah. There's that song, um, I think me and Spencer were talking about, what is it called? Um, it's from that Elevation album, uh, Here in the Presence of the Lord. Uh, we've never done it. Here in the it's presence. like... Yeah, it was one that we haven't done. Da, 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 da. I don't remember. Hmm. It's like, uh, Here in the Presence of the Lord. It's like... Uh, 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 but the whole song, I don't remember it. It's, 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 <laughs> I'm like, I'm waiting for I something else to clue me in as to what it might be. I will you look it up later. Little... I will put it in the description. It's, it's not a bad song, but it was weird because the song is kind of coming from God's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's like, I know you're tired of running. Lift up your hands, receive him now. And it's like, who is this the worship leader talking or is are we kind of putting God's mm-hmm. 
words in God's mouth. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, but very what's the what's the tell us more care. about the song that you're working on right now. I mean, that's it. Uh, you're saying like, hey, it's I know, right. I know. Hey, can I be real? Can I be real? Yeah, I know some things that uh, I'm not gonna. I don't want to spoil things. That Lane doesn't know. Yeah, I know. I know things that Lane doesn't <laughs> know. Gonna, yeah. Um, she knows how to change the oil in her car. So that's true. She's but got a leg up on me there. That. But <laughs> I'm, what I'm asking is, how much can we tell people? How much? How much I mean, do you want to tell people right now? I don't know. I guess. I guess we. I can. We can tell people as much as. Can you hum it? Yeah. <laughs> If it gets people to listen to the <laughs> podcast, I guess. I mean, how many, how many, how many like listeners? Can you not will you? No, no. I'm like, I'm like, can will you? you? <laughs> I bet you can't hum it. <laughs> you can't. I'm trying many, to egg him on. I mean, how many, how many listens do you normally get on the podcast? Uh, anywhere from like eighty to a thousand. Okay. I and uh, so there's a potential that like all of our students listen to it. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I don't want to spoil it for everybody. I don't know. Well, you already said, hey, the goal is not to talk too much yeah, about giving glory to God mm-hmm. collectively. Yeah. I have a feeling this this episode is going to pop off, though. It is. Oh yeah, it is. Um, yeah. I've got a really good like clickbaity thumbnail in mind. Okay, can't tell okay. you about it, but it's going to pop off. Just <laughs> but wait. yeah, it's it's all about and it's it's a really fun song too, and it's it's a gathering song. It is a um, let's all gather together and give thanks to God. Let's yeah. all yeah, pump. let's all give I'm thanks pumped. to the Lord. Yeah. All right. All right. That's the vibe. Easter eggs all over the place, it's right really there. Cool. Right there, it's really cool. So, um, that that's a uh, that's intriguing. If you are, you know, a middle school or high school or college student, if you if you just like worship music, I think you should check out Movement <laughs> Youth Music yeah. on Spotify. Uh, it's on Apple Apple Music. Music, mm-hmm. but can I be Spotify, real? Apple Music YouTube. does not play well. It doesn't. It doesn't play mm-hmm. well with artists. No. We They're like an Apple Music user. Like you're an Apple Music yeah. user. Well, it's so you Apple probably Music. have like the like 15 year old outdated profile picture for Movement Youth because they won't yeah, even let us change not. our profile picture. Yeah, I have tried. I've gone in. I've put my email in. I've done like you know the password resets or whatever, and I keep trying to get control of the movement. Dang, we probably shouldn't have been saying account. the name of this company. We're gonna get like ghosted. <laughs> Yeah, we uh we well, have an issue with the fruit me. company. We the just fruit, have a little bit of an issue the with the company. fruit company. Oh, I can say this about the song too. We are going to be playing it uh, on May, on June June the June the worship sixth the worship the extended worship set. Yeah, uh, so if you're June, in the Gainesville area, June which 7th? when is it? I think I looked at some of no, the no, no, June fourteenth. Got to be. Is it really? Got to be the second week in June. I don't know. We're having an extended worship June. night. I know that. Um, and so if you're part of the movement you fam you gotta yeah uh, come through come check it out and if and you'll you're hear just in the area song. come and worship with us and they're gonna do the new song you yeah. promise promise you promise mm-hmm. what, do you, what is gonna happen if can we break your thumbs if you don't all right that was a little extreme sure we that was a little extreme songs for uh, yeah we wouldn't get any new songs yeah he, do you really need thumbs to play guitar yeah <laughs> which one which in which pinky could you you, mean, you could probably get away without you your right finger. pinky if, without your right pinky I could get away without it, yeah, but I still would feel weird. We're going to break your right pinky if you don't play that new worship song. <laughs> I still feel weird. At that, yeah. You'd this get used to it. I ripped my my fingernail off my pointer finger. <laughs> I was starting a, a line trimmer, and it and just like ripped it off. It got caught on the engine. And even that, like, just that nail holding a pick and playing it, like, I couldn't. It was so difficult. Sounds really traumatizing. It threw me off. I'm glad you're I'm glad you're through. <laughs> you got through that. I don't know why. My instinct was just to not be sympathetic at all and just be Suck mean. Suck it up, um, Lane. This is why we have you on the podcast because you're you're nice. You're nice. Oh, and uh, okay. and, uh, yeah. and uh, you, you don't just. They were just me and Zach. Throw people just, under the bus. We would just make fun of each other the whole time. And it would, we'd start punching each other before yeah, the probably. show was over. Um, but Lane, I'm I'm trying to think of like a a smooth creative way to segue to our next mm-hmm. point of conversation. Um. Real talk. I was talking to Elaine a while back. She, how many of these episodes have you been on? I've lost count. Um, She's lost count. So many probably episodes. Four or so five. Many. I think. Four or five. Yeah. Like episodes on the Four Youth Podcast. Yeah. You did the one with Jordan. You did the one. I'm not gonna try to figure yeah. it. You <laughs> did a bunch. Yeah. You did a bunch. And um, as we've been talking about this more and more, I'm like, you're you're a regular. What do you think we need to talk about on the podcast? Mm-hmm. And we've danced around this idea of a call to ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you specifically brought up like. What does it mean when somebody says they they heard from God? Yeah. Like, or I want to hear from God, or I'm trying to hear from God. Um. So, you 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 know what we're talking about with call to ministry. We'll get to that. But like, why don't you, like, open up yeah. that can of worms? What what are you what are you curious about? What do you think needs to be mm-hmm. talked about? 
I think with the voice of God thing, what got me a lot on it was when I, anytime I was in points in my life where I was praying a lot, I get super caught up in not being able to discern between God's voice and my own like internal dialogue. Mm. Like, am I convincing myself that this is what God's saying to me because it's what I want to hear? And then anytime that it's talked about in sermons, at pretty much everything I see mm-hmm. is like, you have to spend time with God to get to know his voice. Mm. But I think even that sometimes is hard. Like there's a lot of things about faith that are not tangible. And that's one of the things that I think is hard to grasp is like God's voice. Like there's no way I can't play like a recording for somebody to show them what it sounds like. The most I can do mm. is be like, well, you got to feel it out, but you can't totally trust your heart all the time. Mm. So you have to yeah. discern, but it's tricky. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So I think that's the most difficult part is, getting to know how you can discern between God's voice and your own. Mm. Um, and just like finding your own ways to get mm-hmm. to know him. Cause that's a lot of times what you're always told to do when yeah. it comes to like discerning between his right. voice. Is that like the, is that like the question that you know, or the answer people, you know, that people are going to give you oh, yeah. when you ask it's your also youth the answer pastor, I give myself when I'm right. like, what do I do? I'm like, well, you know, you just have to read your Bible more. I'm like, I don't right. Right. <laughs> it's like when somebody is like, yeah. you, you come and you're like, I've got this, big life-changing decision mm-hmm. what should i do and they go have you prayed about yeah. it yeah <laughs> it's like oh, yes yes i, yes, I have prayed, prayed about it. it and you know deep down you're like i know that prayer is important mm-hmm. i'm not trying to underscore that i'm not trying to say that that's lousy advice mm-hmm. yeah and a lot of people haven't prayed about it and like but you can always pray like, more oh, but yeah. i wanted you to give me like the <laughs> the secret sauce answer yeah. for yeah. this that's specific exactly, problem yeah really. that's exactly what goes in my head yeah yeah but. it's it's tough uh, so people say, like, pray about it. People say you need to get to know God better. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've got some thoughts. Um, but what what are some ways that you have tried to get to know God better? Because it um, sounds like like you, you've been there before. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. I think one thing I changed in my Bible studies, and this actually I changed when we were trying to do the shred. I didn't end up finishing that, but the shred was like, you know. Me neither. I did my best. In, yeah. <laughs> was it a month or? A or month. 30 days. Yeah. yeah. I didn't finish that, but I did go through the Old Testament. How far did you get? Oh, you got through the whole Old Testament? Mm-hmm. Dang, dang. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. I, I mean, I did too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, I changed my Bible study habits to like kind of reading the Bible as a whole to get an idea of like it's like the Bible's story from an outside pers- not outside perspective, but like seeing like it all Like bird's eye connect. view. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. like right now I'm doing a study in Proverbs, and I think about if I just read like a few parts of Proverbs, you know, it's all about wisdom and stuff. Mm-hmm. It it does just kind of feel like sometimes it just feels like little like anecdotes. Yeah. But when disconnected. You, yeah, yeah. But when you yeah. read the stories of the Bible, you see like in the Old Testament with them going through the wilderness and stuff like that. Then you see God's character a little bit more, yeah. like mm-hmm. all the times that He had mercy and stuff like that. So I changed that about my Bible study. Um, and then I also started prayer journaling. I don't know if that mm, was that's a big one. I kept yeah. it in my car, and I like every morning would write like a letter, and I would just kind of like word vomit, and then I read it back, and I. Mostly what changes a lot is seeing how God has changed the way I thought about those mm. things. Mm. It's like he has been mm. encouraging you. He has been molding yeah. you and shaping you the way that you're asking, yeah. but you didn't have mm-hmm. the perspective to see it yeah, until it, you were able to go back and say, oh, that's what I used to think like. Yeah. It also took it took my thought process off of like immediate answers. Yeah. So looking back on it, I was like, man, I did not understand that for a long time. And so then it kind of helped me to understand how to pray and not like mm. expect God to immediately like, Q and A, yeah. me right then in the right, moment, right, you know? right, like boom, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I always used to hear people. I, I swear, I don't know if this was like a, like a '90s thing or something. I used to hear people all the time talk about like, you know, I was trying to figure out if I should marry this person mm-hmm. or go to this college, and I prayed, God, if you want me to ask this person to marry me, then give me green lights all the way across <laughs> town. And by golly, He gave me green lights, and then I got down on my knee, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. Like, I kind of wish that was exactly how right. it went. Right. Like, like never I've, never, I've never I've never had experience. that. Um maybe I, I don't have enough faith. It, I don't think, but, but yeah. Um maybe maybe <laughs> maybe some of us have like we've asked God like, "Okay, God, give me green lights." And he didn't. And then we're like, <laughs> guess, he, anyway. "Guess he didn't work. Guess that just doesn't, you <laughs> no. know. Uh, I guess you're probably not supposed to ask God that question. That doesn't mean he's saying no." Yeah. He's like, "No." But anyways, um yeah, no, so it, it is important to say, "I want to I want to change my my uh, Bible study habits, my yeah. uh, prayer habits. Um, I, lo- I I'm ADHD. Uh, if you can't tell, then just that's yeah. my brain. That's on the inside of my brain right now. Um, then so so if I just sit down, and I'm like, 
I'm just going to pray about all of the things. I pray about nothing. Yeah. And yeah. if you if you make a list mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. what is, what is on your heart and yeah. then you go item by Absolutely. item. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that's huge. Um yeah. so it's important to get to know God to understand what he's like and what he um might be leading you towards. Mm-hmm. And so so enter this idea of people saying like I heard from God or I heard the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Uh what's like the confusion there? Would you say? For you, at least, maybe you're, mm-hmm. you're speaking for all high schoolers everywhere. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. You represent you're representing them. them right now. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like for me, when I hear people say, like, I heard the voice of God, one, I think of from the perspective of all my friends that are not believers, mm-hmm. that sounds like a bunch of crap. Sounds yeah. like, <laughs> like, yeah. like hocus pocus. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like yeah. you heard the voice of God. Cause like, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. I've had, I feel like I, Honestly, I don't even know how to explain. Like, I have, you know, like, it'll be like a gut feeling or I just know it's right. Or, like, you know, a lot of stuff is, like, um, comparing what you're hearing to Scripture. And that's one way to, like, kind of filter through your mm-hmm. thoughts and determine yeah. what is really God and what's just you. So, like, one thing was peace. So, like, stuff that I felt at peace about. Mm. Um, but when people say, like, I heard the voice of God, I, like, I got caught up in thinking that, like, God was going to answer my questions directly. Like, I was going to hear yeah. the voice. But in reality, the voice I hear the clearest is my own. Because, like, mm. before I was a believer, that's what I still heard. I heard my own voice, right. like, in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think that's, like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think no, that's, okay. like, your unique perspective mm-hmm. that, right. that, honestly, me and Clint don't have. So mm-hmm. I accepted Christ when I was, like, four years old. Yeah. I got a lot of spankings. So when they told me, hey, you're not perfect. You sin. You break the rules. I'm like, yep. 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 Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and I got the spankings to prove it. So I didn't grow up, like... Uh, having a, a really like cognizant high school, middle school experience mm-hmm. of not being a Christian, mm-hmm. and then being able to contrast like mm. the difference, and and so you're saying I know what that was like, yeah, and I I know how it sounds to people who don't know mm-hmm. Christ, right? We can all empathize, but you have firsthand experience. Yeah, it's it's also because I don't know, especially middle school is when I really did not know God, and I think about like I still had like a moral compass, you know what I mean? Like I still right. like, sometimes myself would be like, this isn't right. Now I didn't really have the willpower to not do certain things just because, you know, it was just my own voice. So then when I became a believer and I was told to listen for the voice of God, like that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, I've been hearing this voice in my head my whole life, yeah. like which is me and which is God. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was something I struggled with a lot, especially praying about things that like, trying to give up control to God. So when I'm praying about something that I know that I want and I know yeah. that like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna convince myself that it's the right thing. Right then it's like, ugh, what if it really is the right thing? And, yeah, maybe. And now I'm getting confused, and that mm-hmm. was super difficult for me. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to imagine. I, can, I know firsthand. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, knowing, like hearing the voice of God, hearing from God, knowing uh, what he's put on your heart is, is, mm-hmm. is difficult, it's challenging, um, but uh, I think it's, it's not unattainable. And I wanted us to go Absolutely. to one passage real quick if we could. Uh, open your Bibles. I'm, I'm going to preach what? at you guys. While you're doing that, can yeah, I do, yeah. oh, so go ahead. Like, do it? I feel like it's almost like a three-step process, too, of like, okay, uh, I'm going to take this thing I think I've heard from God. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run it through the scriptures, mm-hmm. which is like, of course, you know, put it up against scripture and make sure it's like good. Yeah. Yeah, Zach was looking up. My so bad. My bad. I was and looking up the Bible. Second step, you know, spend time in prayer over it. Yeah. Of course. Like, those are the two obvious things. And then mm-hmm. I think something else that's really helpful, too, that a lot of people like kind of skip over is... Go to somebody who's older, yeah, and who is wise and has been a Christian a lot longer than you, and say like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I think God is telling me this. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that?" Yeah. Yeah. Or like, "Have you ever been in a situation like this? Like, what counsel do you have to offer?" Mm-hmm. And I think I think there's a lot of benefit to that. And like, mm-hmm. that's what's something really cool about Westside is there are a ton of older Christians yeah. who are here and who would love nothing more than a teenager to walk up to them and yeah. say. I think God is telling me this. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Like, they're just waiting for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So They'd be like, oh, this is like yeah. kind of glory of God just came down and yeah. answered yeah. all my prayers. Yeah. And and I'm sure like you might go, well, it sounds really good that, you know, for you guys, that you have a church like that. But you have people like that around you. Too. You do. Whether you Absolutely. know who they are yet or or you've just, you know, been patient enough to find them. Mm. They're out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in a roundabout way, I'm just like showing you what you said, but in the Bible. Um, this is Acts chapter 16. So, uh, Paul is on this missionary journey and he's, uh, going from one church to another, one city to another, and he's trying to share the gospel across the Roman empire. And God has told him, 
hey, you're going to do that best with Gentiles. Mm. You're a Jew, but you kind of spoiled your testimony with Jews, uh, you know, by stoning people. Uh, yeah. He's he's forgiven at this point. He, he went through rehab and whatnot, <laughs> and he's not stoning people anymore, not uh, not trying to kill Christians. But he's like, you, you, they're not going to listen to you. So I'm going to have you go share the gospel with Gentiles. And it says that Paul came to Derby and to Lystra, and he picked up. Timothy, and then verse 2, he says he was spoken of by brothers at Lystra and Iconium, and he wanted uh, to go with them. Uh, Verse 6, they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Hmm. So the Spirit of Jesus is like, don't go in that Hmm. city and share the gospel. And they're probably like, Jesus, what the heck? Yeah. Like, we're on a missionary journey yeah. to spread the gospel. We're trying to do that right now. Uh, and we don't know what that meant. Like, what does it mean that the Holy Spirit, or mm-hmm. the Spirit of Jesus, forbid them from going? Was it just like, you know, the Christian cliche of, oh, yeah, that that door just closed, right. you know? It's like, what do you mean the door closed? What do you mean yeah. the door closed? Like, they didn't offer you the job, mm-hmm. or you didn't get accepted to that college? I, I don't know. Like, that is sometimes the way that mm-hmm. God speaks. Um, but then sometimes... You know, maybe it, it is like the voice of Jesus saying, no, don't go into Bithynia. Don't go yeah. Yeah. to that place. Don't date that guy. I don't know. Um, at any rate, uh, th- that keeps happening. And it says they tried to go to Troas uh, and a vision um, uh, from the, the Lord says, uh, here's this man from Macedonia. It says they got a vision of a man from Macedonia. And the man was saying, hey, come share the gospel with us mm-hmm. in Macedonia. And they're like, bingo. Okay. Seems like we're supposed to go to Macedonia and share yeah. the gospel. Right. And like the, the lesson that you can take away from that is Paul was busy about trying to share the gospel with Gentiles and trying to be strategic mm-hmm. and saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to go from this city to this city. We know that he was on his way to Pergamum. That's what he was trying to do, which would have been a strategic place. But God, God didn't like slap him down mm-hmm. and say, how dare you mm-hmm. try to share the gospel in Pergamum? You idiot. You fool. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell you. Like yeah. Paul would just he just got started and then God like closed the door here and said no here mm-hmm. and j- pretty gently I would say like Got guided it. him yeah. to mm-hmm. Macedonia where he it was his will mm-hmm. for him to be and share the gospel. Yeah. So I think sometimes God speaks to us that way yeah. circumstantially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe sort of audibly, maybe through visions as well. Mm-hmm. Um and we we kind of just go like okay, but what 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 do I want to do? Mm. And it's it's not quite that simple. Mm. So I don't know. That, maybe that's not like a very Baptist take, honestly. Mm. Like sometimes God speaks through visions, but He does. Yeah. And He did then. He, he did yeah. then. And I've talked to quite a few people who mm. had the same have the mm. feeling that He does now. Yeah. So absolutely. A lot of times people are trying to figure out what do I do in terms of this college, this relationship, this mm. job, uh, things like this opportunity. Uh, but let's just talk for just a couple minutes before we got to go about uh, called a ministry. Because mm. I have this conversation with people all the time about ministry. And they're like, should I go be a pastor? Should I go be a missionary? Mm. You had a call to ministry at a summer camp. I did. Clint, well, and I was about, about to say, like, shameless plug right here. If you yeah. want to hear from God yeah, and you want to hear the voice of God, go to camp. Yeah. <laughs> like... And and it's not just like oh our camp is magical and it's it is though you know, not trying <laughs> it, yeah it's not just like our camp is special and magical and like this is where only where you can hear the voice of God no mm-hmm. it's literally when you put your phone away for a couple hours a day and yeah. listen and, and listen to a sermon twice a day like and do a quiet time and do a quiet and talk time, with your small group leader and do small group leader every day for five days you're gonna hear from God yeah, yeah. like it's not. A, it's not rocket science. It's kind of unavoidable. You know? It's not magic. It's not mystical. It's you're putting in yeah. more effort than you ever do in your normal life to hear from God, and then you hear from God. Like that's how it's it like, works. Wow. It's like yeah. wow. Yeah. When yeah. I do this, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I hear from God. So if you want to to hear and know the voice of God, do something like go to camp, or you know, how can you do that in your everyday life too? Mm. Try going a day with your phone off, right? Yeah. And or and, even and like spend I a lot of time an hour in, in my car in the morning. Time. Yeah, yeah, like that. Even mm-hmm. that is like an hour sounds like a long time, and that's mm-hmm. the point. At first, you're like, "Yeah, this is boring." <laughs> right. It takes <laughs> like, a while to like settle into, into that, and it's kind of awkward because you're just sitting there quietly, and you're like, mm-hmm. "All right, yeah. any minute now, God." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. but it takes a while to like settle in and like yeah. tune out the the yeah. noise that you've been like surrounding Absolutely. yourself with. How many of us like as soon as we wake up, we're like we just start scrolling. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we're just like, okay, wow, so and so posted this. I'm gonna look at the comment section. Why am I? It's six a.m. Why do I have yeah. to look at the comment yeah. section? Yeah. Like, you know. Um, is is that just me? I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> no, but truthfully, not. like you you accepted a call to ministry at a camp, mm-hmm. um, be, because, and and so did I because a lot of the the noise around us had had quieted down and we were mm-hmm. able to hear God more clearly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and also our camp is more magic than all the other That's ones. Right. And you should sign up mvmtyouth.com slash camp. Yeah, we, sign up right now and you will save no money. No money. You will. I, we don't have any like special. Well, you'll hear from God. But you will hear from God. <laughs> Yeah, we don't put. Is that heretical? I don't. <laughs> we're, we're selling God's voice. Um, you should just go. You should. Absolutely. You should sign up. Anyways, it's really the essential oils that we diffuse during the worship services, yep. and yeah. that's what. Yep. Frankincense yeah, and myrrh Mink brings the spirit. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's what that's they brought Jesus. That's what. That's, that's how we bring Jesus. You know, into the worship experience. Um, no, truthfully, I would. I would tell. Uh, I'm, I don't want to rush through this, but I, I. I know we are short on time. I would tell anybody who's thinking about a call to ministry. Mm. We've been saying we talk about this for a minute. If there's anything else that you can do and be happy and be satisfied yeah. and be fulfilled, do that thing. Mm-hmm. Because ministry can be hard. Yeah. Ministry can be very, very lonely. Um, and it can be draining. And um, there, there are a lot of reasons to not go into ministry, but... If God has put it on your heart and mm-hmm. and you have a passion to reach, teach, disciple, equip mm-hmm. people, and and the idea of doing that as a volunteer for just a couple hours a week, like hours a week, if that's maddening to you and you're like, mm-hmm. no, I need mm-hmm. to do yeah. it all day every day, then you could go into ministry. Then, yeah. then 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 that's you really is. you won't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is is more yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. And so. as generic as it sounds, I know every like. I don't know. It's another thing that I got sick of always hearing this answer. It was like, you can do ministry in every place in your life. And I was like, yeah, but I, I want to work in a church, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then I met um, a nurse that she works in the um, immediate response or urgent response center at, um, I think, North Florida, but anyway, a hospital in our area. And she was talking about how she has a podcast and she talks about no. how to, like, I actually don't remember the name. I feel terrible, but <laughs> she, we'll like, put it in the comments, yeah. uh, description. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. She, like, talks about, um, like how to be a nurse and make that her form of ministry. Mm. So she talked about like, you know, she was able to pray with these people before they went into their, you know, procedures, whatever, and that kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. that intrigued me because then I was like, okay, maybe ministry really is everywhere. And I think of like, you know, I have plenty of friends and family that are not believers, Mm -hmm. but like somebody going out of their way or somebody making like a, being a walking testimony, like Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I guess that is a form of ministry. Yeah, 100%. Everywhere. Well, not... Not like a, a form like that. It, it's that it's it ministry. Is, it's much. Yeah. it's mm-hmm. different. And and here's the deal. Like we we just went through the book of Titus. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't think this is in Titus. Uh, although if you are interested, you can go back and watch the sermon series. It might be in Titus. Mm-hmm. But I know it's in the pastoral epistles. Paul says uh, to Titus, to Timothy, and to others, he says, not many of you should be overseers. Mm-hmm. He says, not too many of you guys should be teachers of God's word because you're going to be held to a stricter standard. Yeah. yeah. Um, Another reason to not go into ministry. Mm -hmm. You are going to be held to a stricter standard. You're going to be held responsible for what you teach. And a lot of us are like, oh, man, I just want to get up on stage and Mm -hmm. preach. Like we had five of our seniors get up and preach last last night and they were they did a great job. You should go watch that sermon. But Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's like, hey, let's not let's not all be too excited to do that because we want the stage. uh, But the stage is like five percent of the job, Mm -hmm. like two percent of the job. Mm -hmm. And uh if if it's just that that is compelling you, I'm gonna tell you that'll get that'll get worn out real quick. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you're like, I'd be fine if I never hold a microphone mm-hmm. ever again. Um, so that that's a part of the equation. Paul says not all of us are called to mm. work in a church or teach or preach um, or do it as a job. Um, and and I think the other side of that is like look look at you and and Addie uh, mm. who have led so many people to Christ. Uh, who who didn't go to church before? We did a whole episode about that. You should watch it. Um, it's tagged like here or here or something <laughs> like that. Um, y- you probably would not have done that if you were spending forty plus hours a week yeah. in this building mm-hmm. yeah. as a pastor or as somebody who works yeah. in a church. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I've got a like Clint knows that too. we've got to work extra hard to go out of our way 
yeah. to spend time with people who don't know Jesus already. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I went, I went to lunch with a Christian today. Uh, I, I woke up in a house with another Christian. I, I'm sitting here with you guys. You're, you're already Christian. It's yeah. so like, we got to go out of our way, but you don't right now. Yeah. So here, yeah. here's my thing yeah. is like, what if we're doing the world a disservice by taking you mm-hmm. out of the public sphere, out of right. a workplace one right. day or out of the school and been like, okay, now sit behind a desk in a church yeah. mm-hmm. and, and share the gospel and equip people. Like, I'm not telling you you're not called to ministry. I'm just like, yeah. what if we're thinking about it? the wrong way yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely so absolutely, yeah. um you know if you came here for answers i just made it even more confusing for you i'm sorry <laughs> um but hopefully that's helpful to some of our our folks as they're thinking about mm-hmm. big decisions life-changing this isn't hearing from god as he's trying to help you navigate those and and if you're thinking about ministry working at a church like think about a few of those things but yeah. mm-hmm. um what else do we do? I, I think, are we done? Are we, are we through? Are we finished? Yeah. yeah. Lane, anything <laughs> yeah, else? Yeah, I guess so. It flies oh, okay. by. All right. How much do you charge for an oil change? What? Oh, for an oil change? Yeah. Buy me a coffee. Buy a That's coffee? It. Yeah. Whoa. And you supply the oil? That's my form of ministry. I'll change your oil. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm not equipped okay. for that. For that. Well, you got to <laughs> bring your own oil though. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Definitely bring your own. And, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think that is it. So thank you guys for coming, watching, listening to the For The Youth Podcast episode number. I forget. 10. Uh, 10? Wait. It's not 10. It might be. If we just hit number 10 and we didn't pop confetti or something like that. Nine. It's nine. It's nine? It's nine. <sighs> Next Come time. back number 10. Next time. Yeah. Number 10. And uh, y'all take care now. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>